morning and welcome to the Breastplate Prayer Devotional. I'm your host, Bishop Larry Jackson. Today we will discuss the Tabernacle's Gate, Part 3. <laughs> for this has been awesome. We've gone through one and two, and it's been very exciting for me. So let's go into part three. Exodus chapter 27, verse 16 reads, For the gate of the court, there shall be, listen to this, a curtain 20 cubits long, woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine linen, made by a weaver. It shall have four pillars and four sockets. So in the last session, on the last lesson, we discussed the colors found in the gate and how they represented the Lord Jesus and how the approach to God must start with being grateful or thankful that Jesus has come from heaven, blue, sanctified from the world who lived a righteous life, white, demonstrated and instructed men concerning the wisdom from heaven, purple, who took my penalty of sin upon himself as he became my redeemer through sacrifice red. And we find that in 1 Corinthians 1 and 30, you see. So that's how those colors work to represent Jesus. Now, I want you to know that these colors are also connected with the four gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John which all of them are writing of Jesus. So the gospel account of St. John represent the color blue for heavenly origin. <laughs> the gospel of Luke represents the color white for righteousness. The gospel account of Matthew represents the color of purple for kingly authority. The gospel of Mark represent the color red for the sin offering sacrifice. Now, with this understanding, you can read the gospels with a new understanding about what the writer is attempting to convey. For instance, it is clear why St. John started his writing with, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. St. John was focusing on the heavens, and he doesn't even give a genealogy. He doesn't go through a genealogy of who begot who and who begot that. <laughs> he doesn't do that at all because why? He's starting from heaven blue. He's starting from heavenly origin. That's how he's identifying Jesus. Mark gospel also omits um, the genealogy. Why? Because servants don't get a genealogy. And that is red, the sacrifice that is needed for my sin offering. He is, is seen as a servant who gives his life. And he doesn't need a genealogy. He doesn't get a genealogy. One, I'm starting in heaven. The other one, I'm dealing with him as a servant. Neither of them need. So only Matthew and, um, um, and Luke gives genealogies. Okay, so that, help, that should help you greatly there. Um, so, we will see also that when we get to the door of the tabernacle, these colors are there as well. Now, but we're going to add gold and we're going to embroider a cherub, a cherubim into the fabric. But we're not there yet. So let's get back to the gate. Let's go back to the gate of entry. This is the gate of entry. This is entering into the gate of entry. Okay. Now, at, at, at the gate, the colors are in contrast to what? The fence. The fence is entirely white. We said that it is seven and a half to eight and a half feet tall. Okay. It has, it. the fence itself has 420 feet of fine linen, linen from one end, connected to one end of the gate, to the other end of the gate. All right. Allowing the gate to stand out in beauty. Allow the gate to stand out from the fence. That even though you're connected to the fence, the gate catches your eye. So the gate is also positioned eastward. So that means as the sun rises in the morning, the, the light of the sun shines on the gate first. Glory to God. And you see the brilliance of the colors. Okay, so your attention is here at the gate. 
the width of the gate. This is an amazing thing because I told you the the width all the way around for the fence is 420 feet. The gate width is 30 feet, giving you a total of 450 feet. But listen to this. <laughs> Isn't that an interesting number? 30 feet wide. Why? Because Jesus started his ministry at the age 30. Isn't that amazing? Now, also, get, catch this. The gate curtain, again, the curtain was fastened to four wooden pillars. The Shechem wood was used to make all of the pillars connected to the entire structure. So all of the pillars that connected in the fence, all of the pillars that's in the gate, were all made of this Shechem wood. Okay, this wood didn't decay. It is not a decayable wood. It could be said it is incorruptible just like Jesus was, completely incorruptible. And now the believer was born from the same incorruptible seed. According to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, watch this, it says, the wood is incorruptible. Now, the seed that we have become is an incorruptible seed. The other thing that is important is, wood represents humanity. Therefore, this beautiful one who is from heaven operating in heavenly authority, living a righteous life before God and man who will sacrifice his life is a man because the wood represents that. Listen to what Jesus said about himself as it relates to the gate of the tabernacle. St. John chapter 10, verse 7. Then Jesus <laughs> then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Only one way in, only one way out. As you can clearly see, when Jesus tells his disciples, that he was the way he meant it. And the shadow of the tabernacle proves it. <laughs> hey, listen, guys, thank you so much again for joining me, um, being with me. I thank you are uh, being blessed. I hope you're being blessed, and I thank you for being with me. But now, listen, go to my website, visit my website at bishoplarryjackson.com. I told you I'm giving away my free book there, Guilt-Free Living. All you got to do is visit the site. That's it. That's all required. You don't have to purchase a thing. All you got to do is download the book. I guarantee you will be blessed. Until the next time, approach the throne boldly. Bye-bye.